Welcome to the second Counter Foundation class. This class builds on class 1 which explained metric types, and we're now looking at Counter Release 5 reports and what they mean. Release 5 of the Counter Code of Practice has four master reports. These are the Platform Master Report, the Database Master Report, the Title Master Report, and the Item Master Report. Master reports can be filtered on attributes, notably year of publication, indicated by YOP, data type, access type, access method, and metric type. Class 1 in this series explains metric types, and we will shortly bring you a class which explains the other attributes. Master reports provide the most complete view of counter data. You can filter master reports to show a subset of data that suits your needs, but Release 5 also includes standard views that are pre-filtered views of the master reports. Many of the standard views are analogous to the R4 counter reports. They help create consistency for the sake of comparison from year to year or between institutions. Because standard views only hold a subset of the information from a master report, it is not possible to unfilter a standard view to obtain its parent master report. Before we go on to look at the reports in detail, there are some key points to note. The set of master reports provided by a publisher or vendor will depend on their platform. For example, the publisher of an ANI database would not produce a title master report. The second point of note is that it is possible to exclude the month-by-month -month breakdown of activity and show only the total activity for the whole reporting period. In Release 5, all counter-reports have a common format. We're going to have a look at the report headers which are standardised across all reports. These provide the following information. The name of the report, the identifier for the report, the counter code of practice release number. Note that from January 2019, only Release 5 is counter compliant. The name of the institution the report is attributed to, the identifier for that institution, the metric types included in the report, the list of filters applied to generate the report, the list of attributes applied to the data to generate the report, any exceptions that occurred in generating the report, the reporting period, that is, the date ranges covered by the report, the date the report was run, and the name of the organisation that generated the report. There is always one row left blank. This blank row is to make it easy to add filtering and sorting in Excel and Google Sheets. Every counter-compliant publisher and vendor will adhere to this common report header format, as anything else will not be counter-compliant. For the purposes of this foundation class, we're showing the header and body information separately, but in an actual Counter Release 5 report, these would be in the same sheet, with the header in cells A1 to B13 and the body of the report below. All publishers and vendors must provide a platform master report, known as a PR, showing activity across all metrics for entire platforms. Within a master report, you will find the elements platform, data type, access type, access method, metric type, and reporting period total. This is an example of what a platform master report looks like in action. The PR is relatively compact, only six columns across, plus monthly breakdowns. Every metric type should be included, but for the purposes of this class, only a subset is shown in the example in this slide. A PR has been generated for Publisher Platform Alpha. It covers the period from the 1st of January to the 30th of June 2017. In this case, users from Sample University have investigated a series of journal and book items, but have not attempted to access any full text. This means we have a total of 15 investigations across 11 unique items, but the report does not show any requests. Users have also been denied access to a database on three occasions during the report period. Remember, if you're not sure about investigations, unique items or requests, take a look at the first class in this series. There is one standard view for the PR. 
PRP1 is a preset view of PR that shows total and unique item requests as well as platform searches. Database master reports are known by the acronym DR. They show activity across all metrics for entire databases or fixed collections of content which behave like a database. DRs are less compact than PRs, with 11 columns across plus the monthly breakdowns. In addition to the columns in the platform master report, a DR will show the database name within the platform, the publisher details, and the year of publication. The elements in the database master report are database, publisher, publisher ID, platform, proprietary ID, data type, year of publication, access type, access method, metric type, and reporting period total. Here is an example of part of a DR in action. Every metric type should be included, but only a subset are shown in the example on this slide. In this example, a DR has been generated for the multimedia database on Publisher Platform Alpha. It covers the period from the 1st of January to the 30th of June 2017. And in this case, users from Sample University have investigated eight items in the database and requested the full record for three of those items. A DR can be filtered according to user needs and has two standard views. DRD1 is a database search and item usage report. This is a preset standard view of DR showing total item investigations and requests as well as searches. DRD2 is an access denied report. This preset standard view of DR shows where users were denied access because simultaneous use licenses were exceeded or their institution did not have a license for the database. Title master reports, TRs, show activity across all metrics for entire titles, which may be books or journals. The elements in a TR are title, publisher, publisher ID, platform, DOI, proprietary ID, ISBN, print or online ISSN, URI, data type, section type, year of publication, access type, access method, metric type, and reporting period total. Remember, URI indicates a uniform resource identifier, a string of characters used to identify a resource, which is similar to an ISSN or a DOI. This is an example of part of a title master report. We can see usage of Journal 6 published by Gamma. A total of eight items have been investigated and three item requests have been made from this journal in the reporting period. A TR can be filtered according to user needs and has seven standard views, which apply to different host types. For example, an e-journal host does not need to provide TRB1, which relates only to books. The three standard views shown on this slide are used to evaluate usage of ebooks. TRB1 is a book requests excluding gold open access report. It shows activity for all content that is not gold open access. The numbers of unique item requests may vary by sites and will definitely vary based on whether the content is delivered as a complete book or by chapter, but the unique title request will be the same regardless of delivery mechanisms. Aggregated full content and ebook host types will provide this report. TRB2 is book access denied. Again, this is a standard view of TR that shows where users were denied access to books because their concurrency license was exceeded or their institution did not have a license for the database. TRB3 is book usage by access type. This is a standard view of TR showing all applicable metric types broken down by access type. Don't forget, access type is the attribute used to determine whether content was open access or not. If you used Release 4's BR1 and BR2 reports to assess book usage, you should now use only the TRB1 to obtain comparable reports. The unique title requests metric in TRB1 will tell you the usage for each book, whether the platform delivers whole books or individual chapters. The following four standard view reports are used to evaluate usage of journals. 
TRJ1 is a standard view showing full text activity for all content that is not Gold Open Access. Aggregated full content vendors and e-journal publishers are the host types that will provide this report. This is essentially equivalent to the counts in Counter Release 4 JR1, with the totals from JR1 GOA removed. TRJ2 is a preset standard view of TR showing where users were denied access to journals because their simultaneous use licenses were exceeded or their institution did not have a license for the journal. TRJ3 is a preset standard view of TR showing all applicable metric types broken down by access type. The final standard view related to journal usage is TRJ4. This is journal requests by year of publication excluding Gold Open Access. You can filter this report by title to view usage by year of publication. This scenario shows how a librarian, Barbara, might use the title master reports in her evaluation of usage. She wants to assess usage from journal X. She'd like to know what the total usage is and how much of that usage is for Gold Open Access articles. She therefore downloads the Title Master Report. This shows the count for Access Type Controlled, Unique Item Requests, at 49, and the count for Access Type OA Gold, Unique Item Requests, at 18. In this case, Barbara can see that the total usage for the journal in this period is 67 Unique Item Requests, 49 plus 18. 73% of the usage is for controlled content, that is, subscription content, and 27% of usage is for the OA Gold content. Barbara then filters the Title Master Report using the Year of Publication column, YOP, to eliminate the current year and show only articles in her Perpetual Access back files. The TR shows that the count for Access Type Controlled Unique Item Requests is 18, whereas the count for access type OA Gold unique item requests is 3. So the total usage for this journal in Barbara's perpetual access back files is 21, 18 plus 3. 86 percent of this usage is for controlled content and 14 percent is for OA Gold content. An item master report, an IR, contains so much detail it is not possible to show an example report here. The 36 column heads associated with an IR cover the item itself, its parent and its component parts, and appear in the IR on the order shown on this slide. An IR can be filtered according to user needs and again has two standard views. IRA1 shows journal article requests. This is a preset standard view of the item master report showing total item requests for journal articles. Institutional repositories are the host type most likely to use this report. IRM1 shows multimedia item requests. Again, this is a preset standard view of IR showing the total item requests for multimedia items. Multimedia publishers are the host type most likely to use this report. There are some reports which were in Release 4 of the Counter Code of Practice which have been eliminated in Release 5. The three mobile reports, Journal Report 3 Mobile, Title Report 1 Mobile, and Title Report 3 Mobile, have been eliminated because few platforms now offer a bespoke mobile view. They rely instead on responsive design. Release 5 also eliminates consortia reports because their size makes creating and consuming them impractical. Consortia should use Sushi to harvest individual reports for each member. Counter is facilitating the creation of tools that will make obtaining consortia usage a simple one-step process. The other thing that has been removed from Release 5 Master Reports and Standard Views is zero usage. For technical reasons, not all publishers or vendors are able to determine which titles and date ranges show zero usage. If their systems can deliver this information, they may choose to offer customised reports including zero usage, but Counter does not require it for compliance. Thank you for listening.
If you have any questions about this tutorial, please contact us at compliance at counterusage.org and we'll be pleased to answer. You can also learn more about Counter Release 5 by downloading our friendly guides from projectcounter.org. Watch out for more Foundation tutorials from Counter, which will soon be available.